hey, hey. Um, I did not run this outfit past my stylist because I'm giving them the day off. I will put them back to work tomorrow. Wait, hi. I'm, I'm going to just read you an artist statement that kind of might give you some insight into how my brain works. More than likely not. Oh, the hat did come from my daughter, who also gave me the other witch's hat, which it looks like we've got a theme going here. Thank you, Sarah. All right, artist statement. I'm an artist raised in the southeastern United States by artists. Life highlights include being a dancer with the band Dave Olney and the X-Rays in 1982, dancing on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry opening for Elvis Costello. There you go, John. <laughs> Receiving a Louie nomination. It's the Oscars of the greeting card world. Raising a couple of phenomenal daughters. Marrying and becoming partners with one of the best humans I have ever had the honor of knowing. My absolute favorite thing in the world is laughter. So there you go. You might know a little bit more about me now. <laughs> or maybe you don't. And I don't care. All right. So, I guess we'll get started. Here's the painting that worked on yesterday. I'm going to turn this a little bit. And uh, I'm going to add some color. Uh, as far as colors go, uh, I don't generally use like real colors for people because I've never really thought about people that way. Um, maybe I paint auras. No, <laughs> I just paint people the colors that I like. So, my favorite colors are blue and purple and green. Those are my favorites. And then my second favorites are all the rest. I really truly really like all of them. So anyway, we're gonna get started adding some color to this young lady. This this color has dried. And so it'll all be I won't smear that black, which is why I had to stop yesterday because I was listening to some music that you can't play while this is recording. There's my face. While this is recording because I don't have the rights to that. So um, it would be fun if I could like dance around up here because <laughs> that's what y'all really want to see is me dancing. I'm not going to do that. Okay. So let's add some color to this young lady. Um, I think she'll have green eyes. My daughters have green eyes. They have green eyes. I do not. When I was in seventh grade, we were studying genetics. The teacher asked, does anybody know the most common eye color in the world? And I raised my hand because I'm a big fat know-it-all. And I said, blue, <laughs> because I have blue eyes. And most of the people in my family have blue eyes. There were some green-eyed people. My extended family, there were some brown-eyed people. But in my house, I had blue eyes. So I thought that was the most common color in the world. I was quickly set straight. And brown eyes are the most common color. I always thought brown eyes were so exotic and so gorgeous. I have to turn, take this hat off. It's making my head hot. Anyway. Oh, how about that hairdo? My husband and I cut, cut our hair the other day. Good job, huh? Yeah, 
I guess this is what's called blocking in colors because I'm just putting down kind of a flat color here and then I'll add different shades of different things. So I'll probably add some deeper blues and maybe some purples and who the heck knows what I'm going to do. Not me. Anyway, this is not, um, I am going to leave that little curve added to her chin, which was not planned. A happy accident. Give a brush. This morning, I was um, cleaning, cleaning closets and stuff. Um, and we went through a year and a half home renovation, which I got this studio out of that. So that's great. I like it. I'm willing to clean up after that. It just took me a while. I'm not sure where the color is because I'll be fine in a minute. Maybe I'll just mix some white. That's what I'll do. Oh, I was um, falling asleep last night and just thinking of the funniest stories. Well, they're funny to me but I can't remember what they were now. And, and they may not have been funny because I really can't remember them. I wish I could because I'd love to share them with you. When I was in um, okay, so it's the summer between fifth and sixth grade, or between, in my case, sixth and sixth grade, because I went through sixth grade twice. I was playing on a dirt road in South Carolina, and there was mud everywhere because it was a dirt road, and there was a creek there, and I was just having the best time by myself. And these um, two, two little girls about my age, showed up and the three of us played just all afternoon and then finally caked in mud I went home and then when I was 16 my family moved from South Carolina to Homewood Alabama and I was sitting in um, American history prettiest teacher. It's unfortunate, I can't remember her last name. But anyway, um, she's very smart too. But this woman, this this girl was sitting in front of me. She had curly little ringlets, you know, brown hair, biggest, most beautiful brown eyes. And we started talking and I kept thinking, God, she looks familiar. And then she said, where are you from? And I told her, and she said, oh, do you know Marilyn Lampy? And I said, yes, I know Marilyn Lampy. 
and I said she lived down the street, up the dirt road, the top of the road, and then there was her house on the next street over. And um, she said, oh, she's my best friend growing up. She lived here in Homewood. And I realized who this person was. She was the girl that I played on the dirt road with in the mud that summer, that day, and we had the best time. And then there she was sitting in front of me in high school in Alabama. And then years, a couple of years later, it was time to go to college. She and I worked at a department store together and just had the best time. She's just the sweetest person. And um, so I went to the university and filled out paperwork and stuff. And they said, okay, now do you have a choice for a roommate? And I said, yeah, but um, I don't know if she's planning on coming here. So I'm gonna go find her, tell her that she has to be my roommate. So I got in the car and I drove to uh, back up to Homewood and I went into the department store, Riches, if you're familiar with that. And I found Carol and I said, Carol Barnes, I want you to be my roommate at the University of Montevallo. And she said, well, I'm not going to college. And I said, well, I need you to be my roommate. And so uh, I guess I was insistent enough and she went ahead and she applied and she was my roommate. And uh, to this day, she is one of my, uh, I mean, she's, she's my heart. I just love her. And just to think we've met and playing in the dirt, in the mud on some weird summer day in South Carolina. You just never know where you're gonna find your friends. So be nice to everybody. Well, you don't have to be nice to everybody, but it's nice to be nice to everybody. <laughs> All right, so here she is. I'm not gonna do any more to her face. Um, and I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do about her hair. I think purple would be a good color for her hair. Like I said, we're just blocking in colors. Nothing is as it will be. And I may completely totally change my mind. All you other painter out painter painter people out there, you know how that is. And actually probably all you other people that do anything else. Art music, the music, choreograph, dances. More than likely you all experienced changing your mind. Yesterday, I, I encountered a, a man that I know. I was at the drugstore in town, and I had a mask on because I can't go anywhere without a mask because of, you know, pancreatic cancer, stage four, and all that crap. Anyway, he came up to me, and he just started aggravating the crap out of me, and... I just stood there and, and took it because really, what good's it gonna do to tell him that you don't appreciate the things that he's saying? So I just sat there and let my eyebrows do the talking. <laughs> and then I said, well, gotta go, bye. And I left and I decided life is too short to stand there and waste your time listening to this person spout an opinion that you know, they know you don't agree with. And he just, was he trying to get me on board with hating one of my best friends? I don't think so. So, um, but I think it was best for me to just keep my mouth shut about spouting my opinion. Um, and then I got in the car and I called another friend and I said, oh my gosh. <laughs> so she had to listen to me. Uh, okay. All right. Like I said, I'm just blocking this in. I've got to let this dry. And then we'll come back and we'll visit her again. Love y'all. Have a great day. Bye.